Hello everyone, welcome to your 30th C++ Qt game tutorial. So, uh, first thing I want to do is clarify a little bit of terminology, or rather review, because we've talked about this several times. But anyways, uh, remember that we only have one hex class that represents these hexes. But we give it an attribute that describes whether that hex is placed, which is when it's on the board, or it, when it's not placed, which is when it's in a deck, either player 1's deck or player 2's deck. So I have been calling it uh, these different based on whether they're placed or they're not placed. So if they're placed, I've been calling them a hex. And if they're not placed, I've been calling them a card. But it's important to keep in mind that they both belong to the same class, the hex class. Okay, so um, as usual, we're going to go ahead and look at our plan sheet. First thing that we do is plan what we want to achieve and then roughly how we're going to achieve that. So here's the plan sheet that I've made. And uh, basically our goal is, so you always want to write down your goal. Our goal is to generate a random attack for each side. So let me show the picture uh, up here. So basically for the cards, not for the hexes, we want to uh, generate a random number for each side, which represents the attack value of that side. Uh, okay, so how are we going to do that? Roughly, how are we going to do that? Well, first of all, inside the hexes constructor, we're going to go ahead and uh, initially set the values of each of these attacks to be zero. That's because by default, we want everything to have a zero attack. And then later on, we will use the set attack of member function to actually change these values. But we'll talk about that shortly. So initially, we want every side's attack to be zero. So we're going to go ahead and change all of the side zero attack, side one attack, etc. the attributes that describe the attack of each side. Um, we're going to set that to zero. And also here's the convention that I'm going to use. I'm going to call the top side uh, side zero. I'm going to call this side side one, this side side two, this side side three, and so on. So my top side is side zero. And as I go counterclockwise, I increment. So I have side 0 through side 5. Also, I said another way, I have 6 sides. Okay. Um, so now we have these attributes that describe the actual integer attack value for each side. But we also want to show them on the scene. So we also need to generate QGraphic text items to represent them visually. So we, we're going to have to create those uh, two things in the hexes constructor. We're going to first have to initialize all of the sides actual integer attack value to zero and then we're gonna have to create text items to represent each side and then also one other thing that I want to do is initially I want to basically hide these Q graphics text items that's because by default I'm assuming that the basically the hex is initially neutral and I will create another member function which we'll also talk about later uh, called set visible which will simply traverse through all of the QGraphic text items and make them visible. Initially, you want to make them invisible. Um, now, remember that initially we make each of the attack values zero. Now, in the case of the cards, we want to generate random attack values. So we have this member function called set attack of, which sets the attack of a specified side. Now, in addition to setting the actual integer value, we're going to edit this member function to change that graphical representation too. Um, and that means we need to keep track. So we need an array to keep track of each of these text items. I'm simply going to create an array of pointers to QGraphic text item. The zeroth item will be a pointer to this text item. The oneth item in this array will be a pointer to this text item, and so on. I hope you see the pattern. The final thing we're going to do for this tutorial is we're going to go ahead and go back inside our create new card member function. Remember that this member function is part of the game class and it basically creates a new card for a specified player and adds it to the dex. Uh, so before creating the card, we want to change the attack values from zero to random values by using our set attack of member function. And then we also want to show the side text because remember we make the text invisible initially. So we're going to create this new member function called show side text or something like that. 
and it's basically going to traverse through our list of texts and set them to visible because initially they're invisible. Okay, so um, let's get started with the code. So we'll go ahead and get started with the constructor first of all. So we'll go in the hex class and here is its constructor. After we initialize, we're going to do a couple more things. Um, okay. Um, so we're going to create a, uh, the text first of all. We're going to well before even that, we're going to initialize um, side attacks to zero. So we're going to do side zero attack equals to zero. And we're going to do the same thing for all six sides. There we go. And now that we have the actual integer representation of the attack value of each side, let's create graphics text items for them. So create text uh, Q graphics uh, text items to represent visually each attack, each side's attack. All right, so we're going to create a Q graphics text item pointer. We're going to call this text zero. Okay, so we're going to create a new Q graphics text item. And uh, basically, the uh, text that we want to give it is the uh, value 0, because originally they're all going to be 0. So we're just going to go ahead and uh, make the text. We're going to use the Q strings uh, static member function called number, which takes a number and converts it to a string, because the Q graphics item is constructed using a string. So we're going to set it equal to 0. And then we're going to go ahead and set the parent of uh, this uh, the Q graphics text item to be the actual hex. We want this item to be destroyed when the hex is destroyed. So we're going to do a similar thing for the text for the other five sides. Call this text one, text two, text three, text four, and text five. All right, so we've initialized the actual integer values of each side's attack, and then we've created six text uh, or six Q graphic text items that represent the actual visualization of each of these attacks. Okay. Um, now we're also going to have to keep a track of all of these text items because remember we're later going to uh, modify the set attack of member function to basically change the text also because there's no point in changing the actual attack value but leaving the text the same. The player would be confused that the hex is doing more damage than it's displaying or something like that. So we need to keep track of these. So let's go ahead and go inside the hex class and uh, just keep track of them. So we're going to... Uh, make a queue list of Q graph graphics Q graphics text item pointers and we're going to go ahead and call these attack texts okay and then we're going to add each of these uh, pointers to Q graphics text items to our attack text Q list. So we will do attack text dot append. We're going to add the first text item. Then we're going to do a similar thing for the remaining five text items. I think that's it. Okay, so we add text zero, and then we add text one, text two, text three, text four, and uh, text five. Okay. And now the last thing that we need to do is set the position of each of these text items. So we want to basically set the first text item to be here, the second one to be here, 
the third one to be here, the fourth one to be here, etc. And these coordinates are given relative to the parent. Since we made the parent of each of these text items, the hex, they're all going to be positioned relative to the top left corner of the hex. So we need to keep that in mind. Now with these values, you can probably do some geometry if you know the uh, length of each of your sides of your hex. You could probably use some geometry to figure out precisely the coordinates, but I just decided to eyeball it. But it wouldn't be too difficult to find it precisely. So I went ahead and tested it out, and I found out the locations of each of my texts. Um, so the zero with text, or the top one, for me, I'm going to set the position to basically to be 50 pixels to the right. And that sets it at the right location. That puts it around right here. And then I'm going to set the position of um, text 1 to about 20 pixels to the right and 15 pixels down. That puts it around right over here. And I'm going to do a similar thing with the rest of them. Now, that's pretty boring to watch, so I'm going to go ahead and skip that part for you. Okay, so I've gone ahead and positioned each of my text items properly so that they would be, like, for example, at their correct locations. And now the next thing that I want to do is basically traverse through all of these items. Remember, I keep track of them in a list called attack text. So I want to traverse through that list, and I want to make them invisible by default. That's a pretty easy for loop. I'm just simply going to traverse and set their visibility to false. So that's also boring to watch. Um, so I'm just going to do the for loop here and skip it for you guys. All right, so I just made this quick for loop and I traversed through our attack text list and make each of those texts uh, invisible at first by calling the set visible member function and passing in false. So that will make them invisible. Now we want to uh, make a way so that we can make them visible. And I'm going to make another member function inside the hex class. And I'm going to call that member function maybe uh, display side attacks. And that's going to traverse through this list again and display each of those. So let's just go inside the hex class and we're going to give it a member function called um, display side attacks. We're going to go ahead and make this public. So it doesn't matter. We'll just add it somewhere here. So attacks, it doesn't take anything. It will simply traverse through the list of attacks and make them visible again. Now again, this is a simple for loop, so I'm just going to go ahead and skip it and show you guys the result. All right, so basically, uh, now let's quickly recap. Uh, we went ahead and inside the hexes constructor, we make it so that whenever a hex is initially constructed, uh, we basically, first of all, we set all of its attack values to zero, and then we create a text that represents each of these attack values visually. We keep track of all those texts and we make them invisible by default. But we also give the hex a member function called display side attacks that will then display all of the actual text. I mean, we only want to do that for the cards. That's why we put it in a separate member function. So we'll pick up right from here in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching and see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.